I'm here at HCAM TV studios to meet with Marissa Jones today. She lives in Hopkinton. She works in Boston at Huntington Theater. And she will be talking a little bit about her life, about her work at the theater, about the importance of theater for young people and all people and for humanity as well. I'm looking forward to hearing more and learning from her. Hi, Marissa. Welcome to HCAM Studios here. I'm so glad you can be a part of an interview for Meet Your Neighbor today. Thank you, Cheryl. I am so happy to be here. Uh, when I think about you, Marissa Jones, um, I often see attached to your name Huntington Theater. Um, but the thing is, you are a longtime resident of Hopkinton. Correct. I am, and in fact, I had my very early days here in the town. I attended Sunshine Preschool. Oh, wow. So a very <laughs> long time ago, uh -huh. um, Mrs. Jump yes. was my teacher. Oh, she was and my daughter's was teacher she really? as well. She, <laughs> wonderful teacher. <laughs> and it's funny how life goes full circle because huh. now I take yoga classes at Shanti, mm -hmm. which was where Sunshine uh, originally that. was housed. Mm -hmm. So here I am where I used to take nap time. Uh, you know, I'm doing a downward <laughs> a <little> dog. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. Oh, how about that? Yes. Um, so uh, Hopkinton was your own growing up town. Yes. Yeah, so I lived in town with my parents mm -hmm. from the time I was about three or four years old um, until the third grade. And what was wonderful is when we came back to the community, my children had the opportunity to know some of my teachers. So mm -hmm. Mr. T was my gym teacher, mm -hmm. Mrs. Staples was still here, Mrs. George was a substitute teacher in the schools. And so it was really exciting for me wow. so many years later to come back to the town mm -hmm. and they were still here, which speaks to just how wonderful right. our school community mm -hmm. is. That's right, um, some very good teachers. Yes. We are blessed with in our our town. So, um, so you grew up in Hopkinton, and we will be talking a little bit about your work and your connection to theater. Uh, you were here until third grade. Yes, mm -hmm. and you know, really at that time, the only light in town was the blinking yellow at the end of Chestnut Street. I lived uh -huh. on Chestnut Street. Oh, okay. And it has changed so much mm -hmm. since. You know, we lived uh, here a long time ago. And I remember when we moved back, we had a small place on Marshall Ave. Mm -hmm. And I went outside to go for a run. And I was shocked at how many other people were out running and wow. walking their dog. Mm -hmm. And shocked to discover that the class sizes and the graduating class size in Hoppington had grown so mm -hmm. much from 50 or 60 in the 90s to mm -hmm. now well over 300. Mm -hmm. So we have had this amazing mm -hmm. uh, expansion mm -hmm. in our community. Yeah, that's right. Well, it's uh, good for Hopkinton that it you is. came it's back for also. <laughs> oh, thank you, yes. So um, as a child, uh, how did you like to spend your time around town and what got you interested perhaps in your early days in theater-like um, Sure, well, a number of things. Um, Mrs. Jump gave me my first starring role in really? the Magic Jumping Beans. Oh. Yes, I was the old woman uh -huh. who made the stew. So that's, that's that, a play, uh, the Magic it, Jumping. Yeah. Beans. Uh, well, I'm not sure okay. how if there's a real <laughs> script or if it's copyrighted. I'm, okay. I'm not sure about that. Um, uh -huh. But yes, I had the mm. uh, opportunity for some imaginative play mm -hmm. at Sunshine, and then going along in school, Ms. Cotter in the second grade. Mm -hmm. Um, allowed me to be the lead of our Thanksgiving play, which was wow. very exciting. So mm -hmm. I was Miss Sarah. I was talking to Abraham Lincoln about making Thanksgiving a national holiday. Mm -hmm. It was a great scene where we brought in a stuffed animal um, <laughs> attached to a stick uh, that was going up for the Thanksgiving Day dinner. So wow. you know, it was a <laughs> lot of a lot of laughter uh, um, with, for is sure. That, um, Sheila Thien, the same teacher. Do you know Miss Cotter? Yes, um, I very well. Her name uh -huh. was Sheila Cotter. I don't know. Okay, so it must be that it's my very... daughter also had that play. So oh, that okay. So carried on for many for many years, years afterwards. How about oh, that's that? Funny. And uh, that made a difference to you. It, it's apparent, and absolutely. Sometimes we don't connect these early experiences in our life and how they might poke and have a little impact on how we go forward. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. And in fact, there were a number of wonderful summer programs that were running in Hopkinton at that time. I mean, mm -hmm. we're talking about the 80s, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, we did an adaptation of The Wizard of Oz, and I was the Wicked Witch, uh, got to be, that was... That must have been a fun that, role. <laughs> yes, that was a really, really fun role. That was uh -huh. over at Elmwood School in the summer. So I was given a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. to uh, practice and try out my theater self, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. was uh, wonderful and certainly an important experience for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. And it sounds like uh, support from your family uh, in taking um, educational experiences outside of school. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I think it's a little bit different now. It, being a parent myself, mm -hmm. I am perhaps, I don't want to say more engaged, that isn't quite the right word, but maybe a little bit more interested in directing the path. Mm -hmm. Whereas when I was growing up, my parents were happy for me to do the horseback riding or mm -hmm. the gymnastics class or theater, and their... Um, wasn't a lot of concern about where those experiences might lead me. And maybe, maybe now as a parent, I think a lot about like, oh goodness, if, you know, we um, get involved in one thing, will that really shape the path? Because that was my experience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but I think it's, it's wonderful to give your children freedom mm -hmm. to choose, yes, you know, do they right. love soccer? Do they love pottery? Mm -hmm. What is it that uh, really makes them tick? Mm -hmm. So you're speaking as a parent, mm -hmm. and you're in that role now, uh, obviously. Um, and uh, it sounds like you are very engaged and caring in your children's lives um, here. I cool. try. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, and also very busy working full time over at Huntington Theater. Yes, I work yeah. at the Huntington Theater Company mm -hmm. in Boston. I am a drama teacher there. Mm -hmm. I. I'm involved in a number of programs that are wonderful and special and in fact we right now have opportunities for students to come to an after school program that will be running this spring. We have some spots open. We would love Hopkinton mm. students to, to join us. And what kind of opportunity is that? So it's, it's a theater mm -hmm. program, a collaborative experience. If the students come in and they have opportunities to act, direct, and playwright, but they wow. devise an original script, an original piece of theater, mm -hmm. based on a topic or issue that's important to them. So mm -hmm. we have had everything covered from immigration reform to anti-bullying, and it's really up to the students, which is great because it's self-directed work. Mm -hmm. I am not saying, here's the theme, this is what you... Uh, need to work on. The students mm -hmm. are deciding what they're going to spend their time focused on. Mm -hmm. So it's every Tuesday in the afternoon and our showcase production will be on May 18. So we are accepting wow. applications online right now. That sounds like an exciting opportunity and it can be uh, young people from around the Boston Greater area. Greater Boston also. area, okay. yes. And the ages are? 9th through 12th grade. Mm -hmm. If you have an exceptional eighth grade student, <laughs> we might consider All right. him or her. How long have you been doing that work? Oh, so this is, I believe, the fifth year fifth of that year program. Of program. Mm -hmm. And how do the young people decide uh, together on what the topic will be? I mean, those sound like uh, very important, fascinating topics. Sure. You know, it's, it's interesting. Sometimes students think that they're going to focus on uh, a particular thing maybe because of the political cl climate or um, some news story that they've read and they might mm -hmm. might all kind of rally around one idea and then when they start the writing they discover that what's really on their hearts and minds is uh, underage drinking mm -hmm. or um, you know uh, maybe it's uh, something completely unrelated mm -hmm. to a social justice issue mm -hmm. or something else. So yeah, it's, it's wide ranging and varying mm -hmm. um, depending on when they get writing, what they see in their own work. And uh, how large is the group of young people who do this? So our group sizes have varied, but typically we're between eight and 13. Hmm. Wow, that sounds like a really great opportunity. And uh, it's, uh, it's not, um, I don't mean just theater, but uh, there is way opportunity for the young people to explore these 
topics of question and for their own growth and learning, and it's, right? And it's giving young people a voice mm -hmm. and also an important part of the program is the audience engagement. So we're hoping that mm -hmm. this production goes out into the world and then our audience responds back to our young theater artists mm -hmm. so that there's a dialogue. And that is, you know, certainly one way that we engage young people in these important topics that mm -hmm. they're thinking about. Mm -hmm. So, and the dialogue happens during the performance or after? It depends. We okay. had um, one production where the audience got to decide what the ending was. Oh, the main wow. character made okay. a, had to make a choice. Mm -hmm. um, we might do an actors forum, mm -hmm. so we get all of our students up on stage following the show, and they answer questions directly from the audience. Mm -hmm. So that's typically the format that we use. Wow. So there is a responsibility on the, our student actors mm -hmm. to be prepared to talk about mm -hmm. their work. Mm -hmm. Wow, well that sounds very exciting. And um, your role is a mentor and a facilitator? I'm a co-teacher in the classroom, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. And it is facilitation. It's yeah. helping uh, get those conversations going early yeah. in the program, helping students feel connected to one, an one another because you know we're taking students from Boston, students from you know, Quincy Catholic or Thayer Academy or Hopkinton Public High School, mm -hmm. and we're asking them all to come together. They don't know each other, mm -hmm. and we're asking them to be brave mm -hmm. and to share and uh, cooperate and collaborate. Wow. Well, uh, best wishes with the next group going Thank forward. Thank you. And I'll be Thank curious you. to hear what evolves the topic will be. And so... Um, Let's see, uh, questions then. So I see you as a teacher. Yeah, your role is an educator mm -hmm. um, over at Huntington Theater. And uh, this uh, sounds like a, a parallel or directly teaching uh, in the work you do, as well as um, involving yourself in, in performance uh, in different ways uh, with the participants there and um, doing outreach in communities yes. also. I, the cornerstone uh, program for the Huntington is our student matinee series, mm -hmm. and that is a, just a wonderful thing that we offer mm -hmm. to the greater Boston area. Mm -hmm. So schools come to the theater, they see the same production that you would see on a Saturday night, mm -hmm. and they have the added experience because one of the staff members, like myself, will go to the school beforehand and offer a workshop relating to the topics in the play to prepare them. Um, they're given the script, their teachers are able to come see the show for free before they attend, mm -hmm. and um, then they ha have the opportunity to talk to the cast following oh, wow. the production. Uh -huh. So it's really from start to finish, mm -hmm. um, we're really hoping that we're incorporating whatever this production is and the themes of that production into the curriculum that they're learning at school. So we also provide a curriculum guide uh, to teachers free of charge. So it's a wonderful program. We very rarely have empty seats in our house. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, the more schools we can get out from the Hopkinton area, the better. We would, yeah. we would love to have students from this area uh, come into Boston to see our student matinees. Sure, I think that's a great idea. So it will be good to explore ways to get the word out. Mm -hmm. And um, so thank you for uh, giving that information. It really uh, broadens uh, the understanding of what goes on there for young people. There's a lot happening, right? There is. There's mm -hmm. a lot happening. And mm -hmm. not to say that we don't want adults <laughs> to mm -hmm. join us. We have um, a, a number of subscription packages, too, if you wanted to come mm -hmm. see a couple shows. Um, or wanted to see all of them, that's certainly something we could arrange with ticketing services as well. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, um, let me bounce back to your theater experience. You, were you performing in high school yourself? And I was. Mm -hmm. Now, at that time, um, my family had moved to another town, but I was uh, deeply engaged in theater arts by the time I was in, mm -hmm. in ninth grade. I was uh, cast as Joe March in Little Women, which is so Whoa. timely considering <laughs> uh, the movie uh -huh. that is out now. And um, I had such a positive experience in that role. Hmm. It was just truly wonderful. Mm. And one of the things that, not just for s students who are interested in theater, but anything, whether it's you know soccer or jazz band or a math class that you're really engaged in, 
you don't want to miss out. So one of the things that was happening for me is that there was a lot going on at home. And so the reason that I came to school every day was so that I could attend play rehearsal. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to see that English teacher who made it possible for me to be in that show and who directed me in that production. So um, I think it's important the way we tie our young people to their school life. Yes. And for every single student, it's different mm -hmm. um, what that thing will be. My hope is no matter who the students are that I'm working with, they enjoy their time with me. Not every student I work with will go and have a career in the theater. Mm -hmm. But they might get something special out of it and they may decide, well, maybe I don't want to be an actor on stage. Mm -hmm. Maybe I want to be a writer, a mm -hmm. playwright. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's none of that. Maybe they just enjoy coming to the theater and someday they'll be a donor or sit on mm -hmm. our board. So there's a lot of different ways to be involved mm -hmm. um, with theater arts. I think for some young people there's a special connection mm -hmm. and it uh, enhances their high school experience. Yes, when they're yeah. really involved. Oh. And we are so lucky in this town. Not only does the high school do incredible work, but right. so does the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of ways to, to get involved in theater out, arts mm -hmm. in this community. And the middle school also has and the, been and involved. I, in, I should not forget the right. middle school, mm -hmm. absolutely. There's a lot going on that there way. There is a lot going on. Uh, and that sounds like great philosophy, uh, teaching philosophy you're talking about there. Um, so, um, best moment, how about that for you uh, in performance or on the stage? Um, would you cool. ever say, is there anything, were you singing? Were you uh, uh, saying something funny? Uh, uh, best moment, well, the most embarrassing moment. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was in the diary of Anne Frank, <laughs> and <laughs> um, we were eating cake. Mm -hmm. It was a special moment. Mm -hmm. And, um, I didn't time it right, and I took a line with a huge piece of chocolate cake. <laughs> <in my mouth. laughs> so uh -huh. everybody was laughing. So you know what? Um, it's um, live performance, and mm -hmm. in live performance, yeah. you have to learn to roll with what yes. is happening. So, <laughs> and uh, how did you do that? <laughs> took a minute. <laughs> One took of a minute these. to gather myself. Yeah. <laughs> One minute. Thank uh -huh. you. <laughs> yeah. Well, really important to laugh at yourself, like Absolutely. you said, and roll with it too. Yep. And so um, you went to college at Emerson? Is I did. Right? I went to Emerson and then College. Shortly after, went right over to Hunt Huntington to that job? Um, I actually, I was a theater education major mm -hmm. at Emerson, and okay. I did some student teaching in Boston at Snowden International School, which mm. is an amazing place because wow. they have an IB program. So it's wonderful for Boston public school students. And then decided, because looking at the timeline for requirements to be um, a certified teacher in the state of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. I knew the timing was right for me to go on for my master's degree. So I went to the Harvard Graduate School of Education right. mm -hmm. uh, and was lucky enough at an sort of an employment uh, conference, uh, if you will, uh, Donna Glick, mm -hmm. who was then the director of education. I happened to be at the same table as her. We got to talking and she hired me. Wow. Um, shortly after that. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's been, what a great opportunity I, for I've work. I've never left. You've never so left. It's really almost, love it. what, 18 years <laughs> now, yes, right? Yes, 18 years. Yes. Uh -huh. Well, that's terrific. Um, and does that mean you go into Boston most days? I do. Depending mm -hmm. on the programs that we're running, mm -hmm. I might be in the city uh, two to four times a week. Mm -hmm. So I am in the Boston Public Schools for the August Wilson Monologue Competition Residency. So that's Exciting again, coming full circle. I happened this year to have taught again at Snowden, which wow. was really mm -hmm. exciting. Mm -hmm. And I was also at the English High School. And we are helping students get to know uh, August Wilson, who's arguably one of the most important American playwrights, black American playwright. Mm -hmm. And it's about not only learning about his legacy, um, but also about taking on the work. So mm -hmm. you may, might be a student in an English class who's never gotten on stage in your life. Here's an opportunity. Wow. Here's a monologue. Mm -hmm. You memorize it. Um, you take on that character role, and you perform it in a competition. Mm -hmm. So all of the schools send one school winner to our uh, semifinal round. And then eventually, we will get to a state champion who will go on to New York for nationals. It's wow. a very exciting and wonderful program. Mm -hmm. So uh, when uh, is the competition happening in Boston? So our semifinals are actually um, 
this Saturday and then the following Monday night, mm -hmm. uh, we will have our state championship. Wow, wow. Um, and is there information published on your website about Yes, yes. Events? And in fact, we uh, would be thrilled. Um, we have a number of expansion schools all the way out to Worcester mm -hmm. at this time. So mm -hmm. yes, we are always hoping to engage students in, in this wonderful monologue competition. August Wilson's work is, mm -hmm. is just incredible. Well, I'll be looking into that also. And not I uh, personally am not that tuned into the world of theater and performance, but you are talking about so many exciting things uh, that I would like to know more about. And I imagine people who are watching the interview as well, uh, as you say, whether one is tuned into uh, being a performer or it connects in some other way. I noticed on the website a quote, the power of theater uh, to illuminate our common humanity. Uh, mm. And I don't know if those were your words that I wrote down or, or <laughs> someone else. <laughs> I don't think so, um, no. No, but it is. Uh, why theater in, in the bigger scope? We've been talking about that uh, almost our whole time sure. related to your world. What, sure. Why is theater important for our humanity? Sure, yeah. why theater? Um, because it's in part catharsis, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's, it is about these seemingly unrelated people coming into a similar space and sharing a story together. And I was in a meet and greet for the critically acclaimed play Sweat recently with um, director Kimberly Senor. She's mm -hmm. an in amazing person and uh, really an asset to our theater company. She visits us from time to time, but she was talking about um, this exact thing, just how powerful it is uh, to allow those emotions, feelings, ideas, stories, allow them to happen out there. Mm -hmm. And you have this emotional, powerful experience together with all mm -hmm. of these people. It's really uh, quite, quite tremendous. Mm -hmm. I also think for some young people who maybe don't always know what the right thing to say is, when they're handed a script, they're told. Mm -hmm. And yet this is a way yeah. to be communing with, with other people their age. It's a way to take on that uh, big role in the room mm -hmm. um, because you know exactly what, is, what it is that you are to do. Right. You know, so I think there's uh, also some very special things that happen for actors on stage, not just the benefit to uh, the audience members. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, some type of uh, growth uh, group growing and learning. Perhaps. Absolutely. So. Oh, and it just never hurts you to take on uh, the opportunities to get up and, and speak. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. a lifelong skill, mm -hmm. whether or not you do right. it on a stage or in the boardroom or mm -hmm. at your PTA meeting. It is a, it's a learned skill. Mm -hmm. um, it comes naturally for some people, but others it doesn't. So. Mm -hmm. The side benefit to having a lot of theater experience is, you know, taking on that practice. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and speaking of speaking out loud and having an experience with that, uh, I understand that you are bringing an important uh, opportunity to Hopkinton very soon that we can let folks know about involving poetry. One, uh, one thing I connect with, and I'm excited <laughs> to hear that you're going to be I'm excited in that town. you are excited. <laughs> can and you tell about that? It's an amazing opportunity uh, being granted to us by the Hopkinton Center for the Arts. Mm -hmm. And we are so grateful to the HCA for yes. opening their doors mm -hmm. and uh, allowing the Poetry Out Loud com uh, contest mm -hmm. to come to Hopkinton. So Poetry Out Loud is actually the National Endowment for the Arts program. Mm -hmm. And they, great program. it's a great program. Mm -hmm. And they ask uh, each state uh, to run uh, mm -hmm. this contest. Mm -hmm. The Mass Cultural Council, um, geez, o over 15 years ago now, asked the Huntington to co-facilitate mm -hmm. this program. And we have been expanding. So we now have five semifinal locations. Hopkinton will be one. We also have a contest out in Springfield, Newburyport, the Cape, and Boston. Mm -hmm. From the semifinal rounds, we will uh, bring a group into the Old South Meeting House mm -hmm. for the state championship. And our wonderful, talented recitation winner will go on to Washington, D.C. Wow, for the wow, national wow. finals uh -huh. in the spring. 
I've, I've seen the program before. It's so exciting. It's like theater, but different in the reciting of poetry with uh, animation. It and is. Feeling. Yes. And um, there's competition, there's scoring. It's a very exciting atmosphere to be a part of. And these students are so dedicated. And so to talented. These, uh, representing these poems and so talented too. And this is February 29th. Yes, at that the will HCA. Be at the HCA. Doors are yeah. open, all are welcome. We would love to get a lot of poetry, avid poetry lovers in the room sure, with yeah, us. Yeah. Um, and it's even a wonderful if you're day. not, right? Even if you're uh, not, even if you you're just interested. You get to come and experience poetry um, with what goes on, right? And, and I think one of the interesting things for me, not uh, being a poet, mm -hmm. is that recitation is its own art form. Mm -hmm. And even if you're not mm -hmm. a writer, mm -hmm. um, there is an experience in the speaking the poem aloud. Mm -hmm. There's an art there too. Yes, yes. And getting us all to feel it, I think, um, is, is my uh, way of looking at it also. Um, so thank you, uh, and thank, we thank HCA for yes. bringing this uh, to Hopkinton very soon. I see we're just about out of time for this interview. It's really been fascinating thank to you, learn Cheryl. more about your work. And I appreciate so the opportunity to be here. Back here in town. And last question, um, you work so hard on theater and community and uh, for our humanity as well. But what about your eventual bucket list, something you want to d work on or do or explore in the future? I, I want the problems in Australia, the fires to all pass, and I want to visit there. Yeah, yeah, that is my it. number one bucket list yeah. item. Well, that is a good wish indeed. So I hope that the whole of that wish uh, becomes true. Uh, for Australia and for you, and they will be lucky to have you there <laughs> as well. Thank you. So thank you so much for your time today, and best wishes with all the good work you're doing for our young people and for all people too. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get an $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you.